Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast, and on today's Murder Monday, the Miracle Mile murder of a Korean family. The husband was suspected, but the neighbor was the actual killer. I'm your host, Larry Elise, and before we get into it, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Poddex, for sponsoring this episode. You can check them out today, poddex.com, use the promo code Larry21 for 10% off your purchase. And now let's dive right in to the Miracle Mile murder of a Korean family. Miracle Mile, California is close to one of those enclaves for Korean Americans and was the site of the murder of two women and a two year old boy in 2003. Um, really bad at saying these names, so I'm just gonna spell out the harder ones. So you got E U N S I K M I N, 56 year old woman, Sharice Song. 30-year-old mother, and Nathan Song, a two-year-old toddler. According to CBS LA, the May 5th, 2003 murders shocked the whole Miracle Mile area. It was a brutal crime scene that seemed to lack a motive. Song especially was killed brutally. Her hands were bound and her mouth was gagged with duct tape, and she was found slumped along the bathroom floor. The case actually had DNA evidence. But authorities were unable to find DNA for the suspect. Ben Adair and Sharon Choi say in the Strange Land podcast that the murders shot Koreatown. And daily newspapers covered the murders frequently and revealed intensely personal details about Sheree Song and her family. The Korean community was also shocked at Song's husband possibly being involved. He was a former Korean Marine, self made businessman, and respected churchgoer. They started looking for the most obvious suspect, Song's husband, who was a businessman in the community. He was the immediate suspect and law enforcement did not believe him when he said he was not involved in the murders. The Koreatown daily newspapers did not help. They camped outside Song's business and church looking for evidence he may be guilty of killing his wife, son, and nanny. There was no DNA link between him and the crime. But the lead investigator for the case still believes Song was involved. Song and his wife were having marital problems, but for the community, the family was very well off. They drove fancy cars, owned a business, and they were thought of as very successful in Koreatown. But there was still not enough evidence to prove Song was guilty of the murders, so it became a cold case for a very long time. In 2012, the LA Times reported authorities finally found a DNA match with a neighbor named Robin... Cho. Cho lived three floors below Sharice Song. Lo and behold, Cho ran a Ponzi scheme in the community, which Adair and Choi say eventually became a multi million dollar scheme. Cho built a reputation as a reputable businessman in the community. Cho promised a friend he would get a 4% return on a $25,000 investment. Cho made good on his returns. However, Cho never had any real credentials or licenses, but within the Korean Immigrant community, he was a very trustworthy person. Cho spoke very good English, which was a status symbol in the community. Cho ended up receiving a life sentence without the possibility of parole in 2012. So why did Cho kill Song and her family? There remains a lack of a plausible motive, but the fact remains, he still committed murders. Frank Santoro, the deputy district attorney, said the murders were sophisticated and deliberate. Song also accused Cho of trying to confuse the investigation to make him the prime suspect. Santoro eventually said Cho's Ponzi scheme was collapsing and the killings may have been a robbery gone bad of a wealthy family. At the same time, Santoro told the media and jurors the motive does not matter. Quote, who cares why Mr. Cho committed this murder? He put on those gloves for whatever reason. He went into that house for whatever reason. And he pulled the trigger six times. Santoro made the case that Cho was desperate in his bankruptcy. However, that motive, motive does not make sense because nothing was stolen from the Song's apartment. Cho's defense attorney made the case for Cho, but he was eventually found guilty regardless. In 2008, Cho pleaded guilty to a $2 million, uh, yeah, $2 million Ponzi scheme. His sentence was incredibly light. He received five years of probation. A slap on the wrist required him to submit a DNA sample. The investigators received a DNA match and started an investigation. 
They questioned Cho and started following him. Cho threw a disheveled newspaper into a garbage can. Detective got the newspaper, found five 38 caliber bullets, which were used to kill the Song family, leading Cho to be accused of a triple homicide. Cho's crimes are shocking and confusing. Does financial desperation really drive someone to kill an entire family? Well, there was a very human cost to Cho's actions. Song legitimately had his life ruined. Despite being innocent, many in law enforcement within the Korean town community assumed his guilt. He eventually told the press, quote, if people understood even a little what it's like to have lost a wife and child at once, they, they couldn't cast me as a suspect like this. There are countless rumors that my deceased wife was my second, that my business is not doing well. Song being ostracized by his community must have been difficult. <clears throat> While Cho did not have a clear motive, it was wrong to assume someone else was guilty just because he was a person of interest. Lesson is not to jump to assumptions unless the evidence points to the assumption. So, today's question on the Pondex True Crime segment. If you could know the honest truth about one unsolved murder case, which would it be and why? I'm going to go with Jack the Ripper because I really want to know who the Ripper was. Was he a cop? Was he a doctor, or was he just a crazed nut job that was able to make precision cuts and butchering everybody? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Jack the Ripper, but I want to know what unsolved murder case would you want to know the honest truth about, and why? Leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you want to support the show, you can. Buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash TCNS. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and we'll see you next time.